This is an ear simulator used in audio labs across the world. What it does is it emulates or simulates how humans hear, how our ears work. Audio demos of different headphones that you can find online rely on this kind of devices or similar devices or just sometimes they're homemade, do-it-yourself ear simulators. The obvious question is, do you use audio demos that you find on YouTube, for example, when you're purchasing a new pair of headphones? Are they useful at all? The closest that you can get to the truth is by finding an audio demo online somewhere, maybe on YouTube, that actually has your pair of headphones, so the model that you have at home or in your studio included in the demo. So then you can maybe compare uh, the difference in sound, you know, usually in frequency response, uh, between the pair that you're looking into, that you're considering to buy, and the pair that you currently have. It goes without saying that the music or signals used in the demo should be exactly the same between the headphone that you have uh, and the one that you're looking into. Otherwise, you will be just misguided. After my own due diligence, I found out that many of the reviewers do not really use the same signals and the same music with every pair. And also many of them do not calibrate audio levels. So you have audio spikes or level spikes between two different headphones and obviously that is very much misleading. The most important question in finding or building uh, a reference database, we need to collect or you know, somehow get a list of the headphones that you guys are using in production, post-production, producing music, mixing music, because that list is essentially the core of the improvement. If we do have a list of most of the headphones that are used in audio production that you guys are using every day, then we can actually record the same signals, same songs under the same volume um, and provide you a reference point so that you can listen to that signals and music on the headphones that you have. And then when you compare with other headphones from us or anyone else, basically, well, you will actually have something to compare them to. You will have a reference point, which is very much missing in many, many, many of the audio demos that you can find online. Go ahead, now is a great time. Head over to the comment section and write down the headphones that you're using for mixing, producing, in your studio, home studio, project studio, whatever you want to call it, if you're using them to make music, write them down in the comments. All right, for the audio geeks out there, let's touch on the science. The ear simulators are designed to simulate our ears and they are designed in many different ways. You can find a lot of information about ear simulators online. But the main difference is that we have the so-called ERP uh, devices, which is this one over here and DRP, which is this one over here. The main difference is that the ERP is Ear Reference Point Simulator, which means it simulates um, the impedance of our ears, basically how we hear and pick up uh, sounds just before those sounds or those sound waves enter our ear canal. So before the ear canal at the concha, this is this one while DRP is drum reference point device, which means it simulates um, sound or frequencies or sound waves once they reach the ear drum, so after the ear canal. Why is this important? Well, the ear canal adds a resonance to the sound. It amplifies the frequency region between 1K and 3.5, 4K. So that area is boosted acoustically with our ears. So it's important to understand that if you want to make an audio demo 
and someone is gonna play that back. If you are using this kind of device, you need to compensate for that gain because otherwise the device is gonna add uh, the boost over there and then your ears when you're listening will also add that boost. So it will be double the boost on the, you know, the mid section. Uh, which of course will introduce a lot of problems. Some resonances will just go through the roof and, and you will just end up with a completely useless audio demo. There's quite a lot of confusion between these two standards and what to use, when to use, and, and how the plots actually look once you measure something. I actually have a whole video about that because there is a reviewer, you might know him, DMS, uh, that didn't really know the, the, the difference between these two standards and made a, a terrible review of our products uh, a few years back. I will link that video in the descriptions for the ones that really want to go deep uh, into the ear simulators, how they work and why this is important and why reviewers uh, don't really get it. Regardless of the ear simulator used, its frequency response will be baked in into the final audio demo. It will always be there with every headphone that is, you know, being tested. As mentioned before, that means you can only compare the differences between two headphones, but there is zero information in regard to translation. So, meaning the demo that you're hearing will likely not transfer or translate uh, to your ears once you actually buy one of those headphones. So again, this video is all about finding a way to introduce a reference point as close as possible. Yes, there is not everything um, in these demos and there will never will be. It's like, you know, soundstage and so on. Right now I see three elements uh, in the process of improving audio demos. I think it's crucial to use consistent signals, source signals, and music across all the demos, all the different headphones that are available as a demo. And equally important is the calibration so that when you have two different headphones, um, the, the level, the SPL level is matched so that you don't have any spikes going on. Because usually, well, we all know that, if something sounds slightly louder, usually it is perceived as better. A key step over here is to provide reference headphones, meaning, for example, if you have the S4X headphones, those would need to be available as a reference for you, meaning same audio demo, same signal, same music at a calibrated level, um, you know, provided to you before you compare or try to make a decision if you like the S5X or something, you know, from our competitors as well, you need to have that reference point available to you. The goal of this exploration is to find a way for you to demo our headphones on a distance and when you get them, they will sound as you would expect them to sound. Thank you very much. Until the next time, stay safe and sound. Bye.